order some interesting stuff. EP9009 plasticizer toughening agent from uh, Eager Plastics or eagerpolymers.com based out of Chicago. These guys sell a lot of different types of additives for casting as well as other types of resin casting material for, for uh, polyurethane, epoxy, polyester resins. Uh, but of course for 3D printing I'm not that interested in their resins but I am very interested in their additives. And this EP9009 is a multi-material plasticizer, meaning it affects epoxy, polyester, and, um, and polyurethane, according to their site. And so that was a tip that this might work well also inside of 3D printing resin. So I got some of that and I did an experiment testing it with Maker Juice G Plus. I did a couple of different tests. They all turned out a little bit different. Um, you can hear the printer running in the background. My printer has been working on um, experiments with the FlexVet this weekend. So I have been doing experiments with the plasticizer off the printer just uh, by dispensing uh, resin into beakers like this one. This was a failed experiment. Uh, don't use the floating beads for as filler that doesn't work you need at least something that claims neutral buoyancy which is a little bit more expensive than the the cheaper fill, uh, cheaper um, microbead filler uh, but that aside I was testing I basically put a little bit at the bottom and then cured a disc with uh, with the UV curing chamber and then followed all the usual finishing and so I I'd cure it in for like an hour I'd pull it out, rinse it off in IPA, put it back in under water for another 30 minutes to get these guys fully solid. And there's a couple of interesting things, interesting differences um, between these. Um, one interesting thing that happens when you cure in this, and I'm not sure why it happened um, today so much, but sometimes as part of the exothermic expansion or whatever, a bubble will form underneath. And that'll mean that this disc, instead of coming out flat like this, comes out with a bubble. This happened to me a couple of times, um, both with and without the plasticizer added. Although the times with plasticizer seem to occur more, or sorry, without plasticizer seem to occur more often. And so this is an example, this is with plasticizer, and you'll see that um, it is noticeably more flexible, although it can still break. This guy here is much stiffer, um, and you could hear, you could hear if I weren't talking. Let's listen to that again, uh, maybe after this print cycle. It is more the, the unadded material, right? It's thin, so you, we know that thin stuff is still a bit flexible, but it is much more brittle. The plasticizer does have an effect. Um, this is quite a lot, actually. All right, let's listen. That's without plasticizer. With plasticizer, right? Um, this is with quite a lot of plasticizer. Um, this is with a 50-50 mix of plasticizer, uh, which will probably mean that there's so little polymer that, that it'll be overall weaker. The plasticizer is designed to add toughness, increase the amount of elasticity at... Um, 10 to 20 percent, uh, which I did try. Um, the results were a little bit more complicated, so I can't easily show them to you. Um, and that resulted in an increase in toughness, uh, a bit more ABS-like. So this is interesting because the EP9009 is not super expensive. I think it's somewhere on the order of uh, 20 bucks a, a liter, right? So way cheaper than than the photopolymer resins themselves, and especially way cheaper than these more than these uh, compared to these exotic ABS-like and flexible resin blends. And so I think there's definitely potential here to, especially if you don't want to stock on a lot of different types of uh, manufactured resin, to use the plasticizer to achieve certain effects, adding a little bit of extra elongation, increasing the strength. This is 
G plus, and G plus is very, very brittle. And so you could probably increase uh, the strength substantially uh, by adding 10 to 20% of this stuff. And then, um, I mean, a thin film like this is too weak, but if you wanted some more flexible effects, you know, with thicker versions, maybe not with 50%, 50% is maybe too much, but maybe with, you know, 30 or 40%, achieve more flexible results because this definitely um, is is way more flexible I mean this is a there was a bubble form so there's some super thin areas like this area here is super thin because it's the same volume of resin in all cases um, and even an area where the bubble formed which would make it extra thin that section is still way more brittle harder than even thicker sections of the portion that has the plasticizer added. So the plasticizer does have its listed effect on photopolymer resins, which means that there are definitely interesting things you could do with this as part of your ingredient mix.